Good evening, folks. Hope you're having a good night. Uh, I'd like to start tonight by uh, sending my thoughts out to former Boston Bruin, current Edmonton Oiler, Colby Cave and his family. Uh, if you haven't heard the news, Colby Cave is currently in a medically induced coma because he suffered a brain bleed the other day. Uh, not sure how it's going to go. Uh, really hope he recovers. He was a guy who I really enjoyed watching play for the Bruins in his short time with them. Uh, and Pretty scary, 25 years old, uh, but hopefully he's getting the best medical care possible and he'll be able to get back on the road to recovery pretty soon. So uh, best of luck to him and his family. We're going to start today with some really quick looks at the Unicorns and the Bruins just to get them out of the way. We are going to move on after that to the uh, rankings this week for the Bronze Hitters. It's the last Bronze Hitters one for a couple weeks. We're going to move on. I got some surprises for you coming up at the end of the show. Uh, and then we'll open some packs with the decimals because they're the only ones who are generating any packs right now. So let's go ahead and get started with the unicorns who are currently 27 and 48. Uh, not very good, not awful. Well, yeah, awful, but to be expected, they just don't have anyone to go with right now. Clayton Kershaw is currently leading the team in pitching at 3.06 earned run average and 2.2 war, pitching 111 innings, striking a lot of guys out, uh, but he's pretty much all they have on this team. Uh, Pete Alonso is the best hitter so far, not by batting average, but by home runs. Chris Bryant is the best in war. It's just not a very good team yet. We need some packs. We need some cards to drop out of these packs so that we can open a lot and get this team back on track. Uh, we may or may not ever see that 100 card drop that gives us what we need, but we're going to go ahead and open two packs tonight and then move right on to the Bruins because I know you're not here to see my two really awful teams at all, but you like opening packs, so we'll go ahead and do that first. Start out with a Matt Weeders and then a Frank White. Uh, some more iron stuff. We got a silver here. Travis Shaw may fit into the lineup. We're not going to do that tonight. We'll take a look at that later on. And then we'll open the last pack here. Two silvers. Team's moving on up. We got Tyler Duffy, relief pitcher. Uh, it probably increases the average value of this team by about uh 200 perfect points so we're not going to move them in uh just looking at the unicorns they're just bad uh right now 12th and runs against 13th and runs scored 13th through 15th and everything they got some power but they're not doing anything else uh pretty de okay defense though they're making a lot of errors but uh other than that we're just going to move on and get right into the i think i've got one pack to open with the bruins so we'll go ahead and do that and then head on to the important stuff I hope you guys are having a good day I had a pretty good day today I got to install a light fixture in my kitchen and then go swim in the pool with the kids it was the first real good swimming day of the year so it was the first time that I really got to use the pool for more than about 10 minutes without freezing my ass off And the one pack will open with the Bruins, which will probably have nothing good in it, but might have one of the bronze players I need on the decimals. No, nothing even interesting in that pack. So we're done with the shitty teams. We're going to move on and start getting ready to talk about bronze tournament players and what we're seeing out of the decimals so far this season. So I wish I could tell you that I have had a ton of success in these tournaments. I've been entering them all day, every day. My wife hates me. Uh, we've won a couple. We've come in second place in a few, third and fourth place a bunch of times. Uh, not as much success as I would like, but I think the 32 team best of sevens are pretty competitive. So uh, I'm okay. I'm moderately happy with my team. There's still some guys that... Uh, we're seeing that I haven't gotten out of the packs yet. So again, just packs. I only get the players that I get out of the packs and free to play as well. So just a limited number of packs, a limited number of options. Uh, and I filled probably four of my positions with the guys that I want. The rest of them we're still looking for. Uh, but you can see right now I've got this team in 
their first iron tournament. So we're starting to work on data for the iron tournaments. That's what's going to be coming at you next week. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and finish out the bronze batters and pitchers. Uh, and then we'll be back to them in a couple weeks. But for now, we're just going to look at uh, it feels like the, the stuff's getting a little bit stale here looking at them uh, every week. So we're just going to look at them now and then come back to them in a couple weeks. So without further ado, this week's best bronze tournament position players for Out of the Park 21. We'll go ahead and start with our catchers. Coming in at number five, still at number five, is Roddy Reed. There's not a lot of change in the catchers this week, guys, not going to lie. Reed's up to 116 appearances now. Five of his appearances are in the top 20, nine in the top 50, and 16 in the top 100. So he's still showing up there at the top level. Unfortunately, he's also having a lot of tournaments still where he's just having big old duds. Uh, these numbers, uh, keep in mind, I added a little something for you guys down in the bottom so you can get some context here. This is out of 1,477 catcher performance that I've seen so uh, getting to the point where it's a lot of data and you're not I don't know if we're gonna see a lot of movement uh, but as they add cards and as the people get played a little bit differently we could see some different stuff so Reed's ratings hadn't haven't changed since last time we talked about him still a pretty good hitter still a pretty good defender totally worth having on your team if you have none of the guys above him so he can provide you pretty good value at the bronze level at number four dropping from number three one spot uh, Hector Villanueva so I'll be honest, he only dropped because nobody's really using him, uh, and I'm not real happy with his ratings. Uh, he hasn't. Uh, I think he's outperformed them just a little bit, and I think those top 100s are um, maybe a little bit misleading. Uh, I don't think he's going to remain with 20% uh, of his performances being in the top 100. Uh, the big thing that he, the reason he's up here is because he's got a 13.6% dud percentage and a top 25 percentage of 59.1. So uh, he's getting it done while he's out there. I just don't know how much longer that'll last for you. At number three, dropping from number two is Bob Guerin, the 1989 one hit wonder card. Uh, another one that I think is playing a little bit above his ratings. You can see his dead percentage is pretty high, too. I don't like that 23.1%. But he provides you decent defense at catcher. Uh, lots of home run power here, and that's where most of his value is coming from is, uh, is his power. Uh, they do get rewarded for that. Five top 100 still. Again, I don't expect him to stay with 20% of his appearances in the top 100, but uh, still a pretty good value for now uh, at number three. Uh, on the top five catchers list for out of the park 21 bronze tournaments at number two moving up from number four uh, this is a card i've talked about before i really really like this card uh, he's very well rounded bj surhoff 1987 rookie sensation uh, you've seen a lot more people start to use him now too so he's up to 151 appearances after not being in nearly that many last week last friday when we looked at the batters last just one top 20 appearance but with the amount of people that we've had uh i think that roddy reads more of an aberration than he is anything else with five up there two top 50s but nine in the top 100 out of his 151 uh showing 27.8 percent top 25 percentage uh but the kicker is at 11.3 dead percentage so every time he's in the lineup He's having good times out there, and he's he's getting it done for his teams. Uh, not a card I have right now, unfortunately. Um, but you look at the ratings on this card. He's got good contact, uh, good gap power. Not a ton of power, but he's going to get on base for you. And from the catcher position, that speed and that stealing rating are pretty awesome for uh, you know a number one or number two hitter. He's definitely a really useful card. And uh, defense on par with the other guys, maybe not quite as high as Roddy Reed is, but still enough to give you some good value at defense. Uh, just a really well-rounded card that's going to go out there and perform for you every chance he gets. And remaining at number one with 118 appearances now, uh, six in the top 100, just an 11% dud percentage with a 37.3% top 25 percent percentage aj pierzynski continues to perform uh in the bronze tournaments he does not give you the speed that bj surhoff does and i imagine that two weeks from now there's a good chance that you're gonna see uh bj surhoff overtake him for number one by the way up top it should say he was previously number one this is his second week uh at number one on this list uh, so AJ Pierzynski continuing to get it get it done for you guys out there. Uh, this is the catcher I have running in my team, and I've been pretty happy with him. Though I would love to switch to that Surhoff card. 
Uh, I'm really looking for a number one or a number two hitter to try to set the table for my team. Moving on to the first baseman. Coming in at number five, previously not rated, is the Sid Bream 1986 snapshot card. Uh, he kind of shot onto the list this week. I really like this card. Uh, 38 appearances now. I didn't even notice him last week, but now with 38 appearances, he's just got the one in the top 100, but it's a really high performance. Uh, he's showing a 28.9% top 25 percentage and 18.4% uh, dud percentage. So not having the bad tournaments, and I can see why, because he's got really good ratings across the board. Uh, excellent defensive first baseman. Uh, you got at least green or better ratings in every category across the board and on offense. And then you even got a little bit of speed and a little bit of base running there for you to add in. Uh, pretty well-rounded card. I expect in a couple weeks when we do this, when we revisit this, to see him shoot up, maybe take over that top spot, but maybe not. There's a lot of competition in for, at first base, as you'll see as we get down the list. Uh, again, this is 2,035 performances out of first baseman now. So again, lots and lots of data here. Number four remaining, number four, is 1975 All-Star Carl Yastrzemski. Uh, I don't know if it's because this is a rare card or if people just don't trust it yet, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't have as many appearances as some of the guys you're going to see as we move up. Uh, although you're also going to see as we move up, those guys are pretty consistently good. Uh, no top 20s and no top 50s, so he's not really giving you a top end, just three top 100s, but with 28.6% in the top 25 and 21.4 dud percentage, it's a pretty low dud percentage out of these first basemen. Uh, he would probably be below Sid Bream if Bream had just a little bit more, if he didn't just show up. And these two you can probably flip-flop right now uh, when, when you're looking at this. I think that uh, Yaz's ability to play both first base and left field is just a little bit of value. Um, but in all honesty, you're not going to go wrong with either of these cards. Uh, and again, I really think that Sid Bream card is going to move up. Coming in at number three, previously unranked uh, and shooting up the board is Scott Spezio with 122 appearances now out of nowhere. Uh, he's got no top 20s yet, but he's got two top 100s. 27% of his uh, performances have been in the top 25% and 14.8% duds. Uh, so this is a guy, um, we'll see, uh, this is a really well-rounded card too. Decent defense at first base. Uh, again, green ratings across the board. Not as much power as the Yaz card, uh, but a little bit more contact, a little bit strikeout, more strikeout avoidance. Uh, not quite the speed of that Sid Bream. I think these three cars are going to compete back and forth over the course of out of the park 21. And uh, I'll provide pretty good value, but we'll see if they can take over the top one or two spots from the next two guys. At number two, dropping from number one is Mike A. Marshall, 1998, 1988, excuse me, snapshot. He was previously number one. Uh, this is an excellent defensive first baseman, probably one of the better ones in the in the bronze tournaments. Uh, he provides you good contact. He provides you good power. Going to strike out occasionally, but uh, overall has been performing pretty remarkably throughout all these tournaments. He is the first baseman I am currently running, though I may change uh, based off of the data I ran today. We'll see. Uh, as this is one of the few places where I have options for my top five list. Uh, in 64 appearances, he has just a 12.5% dud percentage, uh, seven performances in the top 100. So more than 10% of his performances are in the top 100. And for a sample size, it's getting up towards 70 or 80 different uh, different tournament appearances. Uh, that's I, I, I like that a lot better than the guys who have like five out of 20. Uh, I think that's more... This is something that's more sustainable than some of those catchers that you're seeing with, you know, four or five top 100 performances out of 23 appearances. Uh, and that's six in the top 50, so it's it's really high-end performance from Mike Marshall. Uh, but taking over his spot at number one on the first baseman list, uh, with 156 appearances now, so it's a readily available car that people are using, six top 20 performances, 14 in the top 50, almost 33% of the top 50 performances ever in out of the park 21 bronze tournaments are from this guy 27 top 100 41.7% of the time in the top 25% and just a 17.3% dud percentage moving back into the 
Number one slot is Kevin Crone, not the 1988 snapshot, uh, the 2020 live MLB card. This is his first week at number one. Lots of home run power. He is getting it done with home runs. Decent defensively. Uh, I don't know. Is he here to stay this time? I doubt it. Uh, he had a really great week, but uh, I don't think that his ratings lead themselves to staying this good. Also, he's easily got the most appearances out of anybody that's being used right now. So, uh, But... You can't complain about the performance. Uh, and so I imagine people are going to keep using them, at least for now. Uh, moving on to the second baseman. At number five, previously unranked is Johnny Evers, 1906 snapshot. Lots of speed here, good base running ability, can sacrifice for you, can bunt for a hit, really good defense, makes some errors, but he's got the range, he's got uh, the ability to turn double plays, you, know, you guys know how much I like my defense up the middle, uh, decent ratings across the board on offense, everything's pretty much 50 or above, or really close to 50, except for that home run power, so he's probably going to be an 8 or 9 hitter for you, but that defense provides a lot of value. Personally, I would use this guy as a number 9 hitter, one of those guys that if he happens to get on base, uh, he can really set the table for those guys at the top of the order. And I like that out of my number nine hitter. Uh, he only has 22 appearances so far, uh, but five of those 22 appearances are in the top 100. Uh, again, the only reason he's not higher is because it's such a small sample size from him right now. But we're seeing a lot of good, almost 50%, top 25 percentage, and just a 4.5, only two duds out of all of that. So, uh Here's hoping that he'll maintain it, uh, and maybe we'll see him move up the or up the line and uh, over the next couple weeks. Uh, at number four, remaining at number four is Del Pratt, 1920 21 snapshot. Uh, pretty good defensively across the board. Uh, I actually kind of like the Evers ratings a little bit better. Uh, he's got a little bit more speed, a little bit more defense, but uh, Del Pratt almost never strikes out. Ten top 100 performances. Uh, much larger sample size right now, just the one top 20, but five top 50s and a 34.1% top 25 percentage. Uh, his dud percentage and his top 25 percentage actually both went up this week. So um, we'll see where he's at uh, in a couple weeks, but for now, Del Pratt's going to sit steady at number four. Kaz Matsui dropped from number two to number three. Uh, basically, his dud percentage went way up. Um, not way up, but it almost doubled. We're still seeing good performances out of him. Still provides you awesome defense. Looking at 106 at second base. Uh, 56 appearances now, five in the top 100. So we're getting to the point where you know a 10% top 100 rate is, is almost sustainable at this point. Almost 40% top 25 percentage. Uh, Kaz Matsui still a uh, pretty good valued card. Uh, I still don't have him. I'd still love to plug him into my lineup, but uh, dropping down just the one spot. Moving up to number two and taking over for him is Scott Fletcher. Why is Scott Fletcher taking over for him? Well, he's given really high-end stuff here. Eight top 100 performances out of 48 appearances, five top 50s, just a 6.3% dud percentage. Defense is almost as good as Kaz Matsui. A little bit slower, uh, not as great a base runner, but right now, this week, uh, Scott Fletcher just outperformed him so much. That 6.3 dud percentage is pretty legitimately awesome out of the number two slot here. And number one, remaining number one, up to 59 appearances now. Still no top 20s, but three top 50s, five top 100s, and just an 8.5% dud percentage. Uh, just barely holding off Scott Fletcher, mostly on the merits of being number one last week as well, is Maury Rath, 1919 snapshot. <coughs> this is his third straight week at number one. So this is a guy who doesn't strike out ever, uh, gets on base for you. I like him as a number nine hitter. Got some speed down there, but really what kicks it up a notch is his defense, uh, providing awesome defense at second base. Uh, 110 rated second base, above 90 across the board except for his arm. But, hey, uh, there's a reason I play second base, and that's because my shoulder doesn't work anymore. So that's all I can do. Uh, you don't need a good arm to be a good second baseman. Not that I'm a good second baseman. So for the third week in a row, Maury Rath remains at number one among second basemen. Moving on to our third baseman. 
At number five, previously on ranked 1996 snapshot, Ed Sprague. Providing some power for you. Not awesome defense, not a lot of speed. He kind of showed up out of nowhere. Just 18 appearances. I don't know what to expect out of him going forward, but uh, for the time being, he's performed well enough to make it to number five on the list. He does have that top 20. He does have two top 50s in, uh, in his 18 appearances. So, uh, if he can keep that up, then he may move up the list, but I suspect that this is going to be a revolving number five spot. It may just be a place for me to highlight cards as third basemen uh, have been kind of hit or miss. 27.8% top 25 percentage and 16.7 dud percentage. Still a little bit too small of a sample size to uh, make a big judgment one way or the other on Ed Sprague. At number four, dropping from number two, is Jack Hanahan. Uh, this is a card I do like better than that Ed, Ed Sprague card. Even though the power is lower, he's got a little bit better uh, contact, a little bit better uh, strikeout avoidance. Um, still not a lot of speed, but the defense is a good value for you over there at the hot corner. 77 appearances now, 16.9% uh, dud percentage, so something a little bit more sustainable, and this is what I think you can expect to see from Hanahan going forward. Uh, eight, per eight of his 77 appearances in the top 100, so that's a pretty good value right there. At number three, previously not rated, was almost rated last week, but hadn't had very many appearances at all. I think he was at nine or ten. Uh, but shooting onto the board at number three right now is Tony Batista. Tony Batista. 55 appearances, two of them in the top 20, six of them in the top 100. Uh, a ridiculous 79.3% top 25 percentage. I don't know that that's sustainable at all, but in 55 appearances, that's something that's real. Uh, I suspect it'll come back down towards 50 over the next couple of weeks, but uh, you can't say no to 55 appearances at an almost 80% uh, really good appearance uh, ratio. Just 18.2 dead percentage, so he does stink a little bit of the time, but that top 25 percentage of 79.3 is kind of silly right now. Uh, we'll see if he can keep it up. At number two, previously number four, uh, with 25 appearances now, still not getting used a lot. Getting used a lot at shortstop as well, but I'm only counting his third base appearances for the sake of this. Uh, with one top 50 and one top 100, uh, Juan Uribe with 52% in the top 25 and 16% dud percentage. He's here. Uh, he's above Batista, even though he's got a smaller sample size, just because I've seen him for a couple of more weeks. Uh, we'll see what Batista, I think Batista is probably going to move up at least to number two if they maintain their performances over the next two weeks. But really similar cards if you look at them. Uh, Batista is just a little bit better base runner, but uh, overall these cards are really similar. Uh, and uh, you can flip flop them, but uh, they're both putting out really good performances right now. Just a 16% dud percentage from Wani Rebe. And remaining at number one with 105 appearances now. Four top 20 performances, eight in the top 50, 13 top 100 performances, just a 16.2 dud percentage and a 40% top 25 percentage is Ryan Roberts. Uh, holding steady, uh, nothing crazy like we saw the last week out of that Jose Batista, the Batista card, but Ryan Roberts continues to perform really well and with his track record through these bronze tournaments, uh, I'm comfortable leaving him at one, number one for now. Uh, if we see 100 performances out of either of those other two guys over the next two weeks that are comparable to this, you may see him drop out of the number one slot. But for the third week in a row, Ryan Roberts is your number one third baseman for bronze tournaments. Shortstop, one of my favorite positions. At number five, previously number three, Rabbit Marinville has dropped down, mostly on account of his dud percentage almost doubling. He was at six to seven percent last week, uh, but now he's at 12.9 percent. Still an awesome card. I love this card. Uh, defense is really good. Uh, his avoid case is really good. His speed and stealing is really good. This is a really good value for a number nine hitter uh, if you can find him. Just a 65 rated card, too. Um, but he gives you good speed out of the nine slot. He gives you really awesome defense and will provide you just about anything you need out of a shortstop, uh, barring getting one of the top two guys in this list. And number four, staying there and holding steady, not getting a lot of play. I'm guessing it's a rare card that people are having trouble finding is Ernie Banks. Uh, one top 50, one top 100. 
Uh, showing 33.3, so five times right now in the top 25% with only 20% dead percentage. I need to see more from him before I move him up. So I put him at four last week. Uh, didn't get a lot of appearances this week, but he was good enough that I'm okay with keeping him on the list, uh, but didn't give me enough to move up the list. So Ernie Banks remains at number four. Number three, showing up... Uh, for the first time on our list is a 2003 rookie sensation Angel Barroa card, uh, which is where I plugged in the Al Smith card that disappeared earlier. Uh, 34 appearances right now for Barroa, two top 20s, two top 50s, and four top 100s. Does have a 23% dud percentage, but at shortstop, that's not surprising uh, because the next two guys are just eating up the top of the list. A 35.3% top 25 percentage, though, and Angel Barroa is, has shown up out of nowhere. Really good defense for you, too. Not quite on par with Marinville or some of the other uh, defense-only shortstops, but he's a guy that you're going to get offense out of. Um, that you might not from these other guys. And number two remaining there is Joe Tinker. I don't think I have to say too much about him at this point. I love his speed and stealing and base running. I love, love, love his defense. Uh, he is my shortstop, uh, and there's only one guy in the game that I would change him out for in my bronze tournaments right now, uh, and he'll be next on this list. Uh, Tinker's up to 160 appearances now. It's still just 10% dead percentage, 22 top 100. So more, a higher percentage of his performances have been in the top 100 than he has had in the bottom 25%. So, and at this point, the bottom 25% is like 450 or something. So, uh, that's just math off the top of my head. So don't quote me on that. Uh, but Joe Tinker continues to be a pretty awesome shortstop for you. Uh, would be number one at any other position but at shortstop with almost 400 appearances now 40 of them in the top 100 a top 25 percentage of 42.3 and a dead percentage of just 5.9 percent ozzy smith remains your number one shortstop for the third straight week what can i say uh i don't have anything else to say about ozzy smith so he broke all of the ratings I could possibly come up with and continues to just be really, really awesome. So we're just going to go ahead and move on to the left fielders. Coming in at number five, previously unranked and showing up in a flash is 2011 one-hit wonder Al Smith. That's not true. It's 1958. I apologize. I noticed 10 minutes before I came on that some of my slides got messed up. So if some of this stuff is a little bit off, I updated all of the appearances and everything, but I didn't hit all of the cards. So sorry about that. Uh, Smith only has 16 appearances so far, but uh, three of those are in the top 100. All three of those that are in the top 100 are in the top 20. He also has the number two uh, left field appearance from all of the tournaments, and he's the only guy I've seen so far with 10 home runs in one single tournament. Um, of all the tournaments I've run, uh, which we're looking at eight times, what, nine times, almost 2,000. We're looking at 16,000 guys right now, 16,000 appearances in these tournaments at this point. Uh, he's the only guy I've seen with 10 home runs in one tournament. And he provides you good defense. So this card is pretty awesome. Uh, only at number five right now because he's only made 16 appearances so far. Uh, I suspect we'll be seeing a lot more of him as time goes on. Uh, I also think he may be playing a little bit above his ratings, but we'll see. At number four is Mark Quinn, uh, 2000 rookie sensation. Previously number one, dropped a little bit. His dud percentage went way up. Uh, 55 appearances now, five of them still in the top 100, uh, still a 34.5% top 25 percentage, but uh, started showing some cracks in the armor and is uh, performing poorly more often than he was the last week. At number three, moving up from number four is Warren Cromarty. Uh, and one of the reasons that Cromarty jumped ahead of Mark Quinn is because his dud percentage is really low for one, with just a 6.7% and 45 appearances. Uh, but also he provides you better defense uh, than Mark Quinn. So if Quinn was still performing the way he was last week, he would have been higher. But because uh, the ratings are pretty similar, a little bit less power from Cromartie, but a little bit less striking out as well. Uh, but the defense, I think, puts Cromartie just ahead of Mark Quinn. Uh, but these guys are mostly interchangeable here. At number two, 
Uh, remaining at number two is 1969 rookie sensation Lou Pinella. Good ratings across the board for him. He continues to perform pretty well. One of the most used cards in these bronze, tourna bronze tournaments at 157 appearances. Uh, nine of his appearances have been in the top 100. 31.2% uh, top 25 percentage, just a 19.7% dud rating. Uh, I like his ratings a little bit better than those last two, uh, but... Uh, you're seeing a little bit more top end out of him as well. So uh, Lou Pinella sits at number two and stays there. And moving into the number one spot, now with 37 appearances, three in the top 20, three in the top 50, four appearances in the top 100. Uh, showing up in the top 25%, 54.1% of the time, and just a 13.5% dud, dud rating. Uh, 2013 one-hit wonder Dominic Brown. Uh, I expect a short stay at the top for Dominic Brown, but with almost 40 appearances under his belt, uh, he's performing really well. Lots of home run power here. Good contact. Uh, he'll strike out on you, but he can run a little bit. Not great defense, but uh, right now he's performing better than anybody else uh, at the left field position. Moving on to center fielders. At number five, previously number three, dropping two spots is Vic Davalillo. Uh, this is a guy that's getting used by everybody, probably for his defense, uh, a little bit for his contact and his speed. It is a good card. I do like it a lot. Uh, in 273 appearances, he's got seven top 100s, just a 16.8% dud percentage. We've talked about him in previous weeks. 27.1% uh, top 25 percentage. They've maintained pretty much steady this week. Uh, at number four, dropping from number one is Jay Payton. 50 appearances now. His dud percentage went way up, though. Uh, still 11 top 100 performances, so he's a guy that's giving a lot of top end value, but he's also a guy who is not showing up quite often as well. Uh, still a good card, though. Whoops. Oh. Uh, at number three, previously number four, is 2008 snapshot Gabe Kapler. In 47 appearances, he now has eight top 100s, uh, which is pretty close to tops in this list. Just a 19.1% dud percentage. 53.2% uh, top 25 percentage. So uh, his numbers are comparable to Peyton, but I like him just a little bit better right now. Uh, just a little bit more good performances versus bad performances. Uh, and uh, with Peyton dropping as far as he did, if that if that's a steady thing for Peyton, then he may keep dropping. Uh, I do like Kapler's ratings just a little bit more. I can uh, I and discipline I discipline and avoid K's are. Um, Useful, but I really like the the green for the first three ratings, the contact, gap power, and home run power. I think that those are more useful stats for going forward. Also a better base runner, so Gabe Kapler moves up to number three. At number two and remaining there, 2007 snapshot Coco Crisp. Uh, this is another guy that get, gets used a lot in the outfield with 154 appearances now, 14 in the top 100, uh, just an 11.7% dud rate. Uh, really awesome defense out of Coco Crisp. I love this card. Great speed, great stealing. Uh, this is one of my dream cards out of my packs for these bronze tournaments, and I'd love to be able to run them out there in every tournament. Uh, but at number one, moving into the number one spot with 48 appearances, five top 20s, seven top 50s, which is just a stupid number, nine top 100s out of 48 appearances again, folks. Just a 16.8% dud percentage, 27.1% top 25 percentage. Moving into the number one spot, previously number five is Dom Demeter uh, taking over the number one spot. Again, this could be short-lived. Doesn't provide you great defense out there in center field, uh, but performing really well in these tournaments. So we'll see how long that keeps going. And finally, the right fielders, the last position of the day. Not rated previously, Andy Van Slyke, and also not the 2020 MLB card. That's the 1985 snapshot. Uh, suddenly has 121 appearances, so I'm not sure where all of those came from. One top 26 in the top 100, just a 14% dud percentage. Man, this guy can run. Uh, this is a number two hitter, that just a textbook number two hitter. He's got some gap power, so he can drive your leadoff hitter in. Uh, but he's got some speed, too, so if he only hits a single, he's already in scoring position. This is a guy that uh, can crush it for you at the top of your lineup. Uh, if his... Uh, if he had a little bit more top end, uh, like maybe one or two more top 50s or top 20s, he'd definitely be higher on this list. And I suspect that uh, if we keep doing this, he'll be higher on this list uh, within a couple weeks. At number four, re remaining at number four is 2020 MLB Live Brian Goodwin. Uh, 89, prefer perf 
89 appearances now, seven top 100s, six top 50s, five top 20s. Guys, this is top end performance. Uh, like almost nobody else on these lists. Just five top 20s is kind of crazy. 36% of his appearances have been in the top 25%, 20.2% dug percentage. So he's having some bad appearances too, but the top end is more than enough to compensate for that. Uh, really good power uh, and good speed to go along with it. This is another guy who you can put in your number two slot and uh, let him go to town. Uh, also good defensively. So it's a card that you can definitely run out there and be competitive in tournaments with. At number three, dropping from number two with 68 appearances now, five top 20s, six top 50s, seven top 100s, really similar to Brian Goodwin. Uh, a little bit lower top 25, a little bit higher dud, a little bit less appearances. So I like the top end from his 20 less appearances uh, is Aristides Aquino. He's the guy I'm running out there right now. Good home run power, been a good five, six hitter for me. Uh, but I think that um, you can kind of take your pick of these three guys and any one of them is going to perform for you pretty well. At number two, moving up from number three, because he just continues to not suck, is Phil Plantier. 38 appearances, no top 20s right now, so not super top end stuff, but he's got six top 50 performances, 10 in the top 100 out of 38. That's 25% in the top 100. Ridiculous 65.8% top 25 percentage. Uh, and just a 5.3% dud percentage. He's, he was in a lot more this week, though he's still not showing up as much as some of the other guys. Uh, I suspect that may change soon. Uh, otherwise, other people are seeing something I'm not, I'm not, because he's uh, performing really well for pretty much everybody that puts him out there for them. And at number one, now with 29 appearances, two in the top 24 in the top 50, eight in the top 100, just a 17% dud percentage and 51.7% top 25 percentage. Remaining at number one is Gerald Williams. Guys, I don't know why nobody's using this guy. I'm not because I don't have him yet uh, and I haven't had him drop for me, uh, but he's crushing it every time he goes out there. He's only had, he only had like eight, 10 appearances this week. So uh, I'm a little bit surprised, uh, really top end speed for you. Pretty good contact, pretty good. He's going to hit you some doubles with that gap power. He'll hit you some home runs. This is a, another one of those prototypical number two hitters. Uh, good outfield range, not great defense, but that might be why people are avoiding him. But so far, he's been performing awesome for everybody who puts him out there. Just a silly, silly card. Lots of top, top 100 performances. Um, but we'll see if he drops off. So we'll see if he can hold steady here in a couple weeks. So here's what I'm looking at right now on my team. We currently have A.J. Pierzynski and Bob Guerin, uh, Mike Marshall and Kevin Crone at first base, uh, Hanser Alberto at second base, who actually dropped out of our top five this week. Uh, I don't have any of the top five second basemen on my team right now. Ryan Roberts at third base, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Joe Tinker and Jose Iglesias, I'd love to get Ozzie Smith, but I'm happy with Joe Tinker. Uh, Iglesias dropped out of the top five this week. He's getting used a lot. And man, he is stinking more than he's playing well. So I saw he was at like a like a 27% top 25 percentage and like a 36% uh, dud percentage. So uh, I still use him for backup defense because I can throw him out there every couple games when guys get tired. But uh, I think he's a little bit overrated by people. Uh, Mark Quinn and Mike Yastrzemski in left field. Yastrzemski is another guy who dropped out of the top five. Uh, and then we got Dom Demeter, Aristides Aquino, and Brian Goodwin. Really, really want that Gerald Williams. Really, really want that Maury Rath. Uh, otherwise, uh, and the BJ Surhoff would be a cool card to get to. Uh, otherwise, I'm pretty happy with my bronze team right now. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to do the pitchers. Next week, uh, I've already started working on it. We're going to be doing iron tournaments and seeing what some of these iron players look like. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully, it works out as well as this bronze stuff has because I've really enjoyed doing this. Now, without further ado, let us see if the team's doing anything. And then we'll get on to packs. Probably going to get eliminated pretty soon. Well, we made it to the second round, so that's good. Went four to three in the first round. How did our pitchers do? Um, 
So here's my staff right now. Steve Cook struggling in this tournament. I don't see that very often from him, so I suspect he'll turn it around. Jack Bird really struggling. Uh, another guy that uh, not the pitching performances I would have expected from this team getting on to the second round. Maybe that's why we went to seven games, but we'll see. Probably the bullpen's pretty tired, so bullpen looks awful. Uh, so far, Diekman's been – Diekman and John Gellner have been good. The setup guys have been good, but otherwise – uh, not great pitching performances. Gesselman's been terrible in two innings. Well, it's just two innings. Uh, letting up a lot of runs. See what the schedule looked like and what these games were like. Uh, let's see. So we lost two to nine. So let up nine runs in the first game. So a couple big losses. Uh, let up ten runs or more twice. But then, uh, well, shut them down in game six and seven. So that's good. Uh, got good performances out of Cook and Ken. Uh, Kenshin Kawakami in those games. Uh, good to see. So hopefully they'll turn it around. Hopefully I've had this team go to seven games in round one before and then go 12 and 12 and one or 16 and one over the rest of the tournament. So we'll see how they do. Uh, and then uh, the iron team I pieced together, I just clicked add the team for a bunch of guys and then let the computer sort it out. I'm just trying to get data right now. So we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty excited to see it, though. So we'll take a quick look at the decimals. They've lost four games since I was on this afternoon, so uh, pretty unhappy with them right now. Uh, 58 and 18, currently 9.5 uh, up. Uh, did just finish a 10-game winning streak, what, four days ago? Uh, kind of crushing the league. I expected that a little bit. Uh, maybe not as much as they have been. 58 and 18 is kind of silly, but uh, let me talk about Jim Bottomley. I know I do this a lot. Uh, guys, if you see this card, this is pound for pound at the lower levels anyway. Again, this is just stone level, but this guy is ludicrous. He's right now on pace for 62 home runs and 196 runs batted, runs batted in. Uh, 351 batting average, 1175 OPS, 212 OPS plus, on pace for almost 11 WAR. Uh, this card is just bonkers. Uh, use him as a DH. He's terrible defensively, so uh, put him out there at DH. But at least at lower levels, this guy's just crushing the pitching. Uh, I did not expect this. He's on pace for 41 doubles. You're looking at 100, over 100. Uh, extra base hits from this guy if he keeps it up. He will not. He will not end up with that many home runs and that many doubles. But right now, this is uh, he's he's been my favorite card to watch, uh, and that's saying something because Napoli Joy is performing. Uh, he's on pace for 41 steals, uh, on pace for 384 batting average, on pace for almost 15 WAR out of Napoli Joy uh, is what he's on pace for right now. 6.9, and it's Wednesday, guys. It is. The middle of June, and he's at seven war already, which is just nuts. Uh, so th these three and four, um, with Bryce Harper hitting well behind them, and Elmer Flick and Dick Grote setting the table for them, uh, it adds up to murdering the Stone League. And we'll see how they perform as they go up, because they will definitely get promoted to Iron next week. Uh, this is the only one of my teams that's ready for bronze right now I think and uh, maybe maybe higher I don't know uh, I think the pitching is still kind of touch and go I'd like to add some bullpen arms for sure uh, Taylor Rogers has been kick ass for us the rest of them have been awesome uh, except for Ryan Presley this year he was good last year uh, with in limited limited time with the team last year but this team's kind of awesome right now they've been a lot of fun to watch uh, Elmer Flick is fun too. This is a fun card. Uh, really awesome defense. This is a this is a really high end gold card. Uh, once I get some iron tournament data, I think you're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and check out the uh, the gold tournaments and silver tournaments. And I think this is a card that could really really do well for you in gold tournaments. That said, I haven't looked at them at all so far, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but I like this card a lot. He is expensive though. For a goal, well, five thousand for a goal—that's not too bad. Uh, but uh, otherwise, 
kind of what I expected out of them this year. So let's go ahead and move on to the packs and we'll open these 58 packs and then let you guys get back to your night because uh, I know you've all probably got better things to do than hang out and watch me ramble on. So if anybody happened to drop in and watch my disaster of a stream last night, that was a learning experience for me. I decided to try out No Man's Sky, uh, which I've played on the Xbox, but I haven't played on the I hadn't played on the computer before, and I decided to put it on Survival, uh, which is a lot harder than the mode I had been playing on. So not only did I not know the controls, uh, the game was killing me really fast, and so. Uh, Panicked. I'm going to go back and watch the video, and it's gross, and uh, we're going to do our best not to do something silly like that again. Probably come back to No Man's Sky at some point. I love the game, uh, but I was not prepared for it on PC last night. Dick Hoblitz. Oh, he got a Max Scherzer. 100 rated Max Scherzer, that's going to solidify our rotation just a little bit. Uh, I'd prefer one of the historical guys to these live DeGrom and Scherzer that I have, but uh, I guess I shouldn't complain about getting hundreds. Uh, so good start tonight. Maybe we'll get more than one tonight. Uh, that was just our third pack, so that's exciting. I still haven't got even a whiff of the perfect Pedro I want. Here's a gold, uh, Marcelo Zuna, pretty good left fielder. Uh, I can sell that card because I'm running him out there already, but uh, he's. Uh, I like what I've seen out of him. So six packs in, we already got a gold and a perfect. I don't know what's going on tonight. Uh, Aquino is one of my top right fielders. So, uh, good card to get there. Uh, Bobby Bradley is a guy that I think is going to be one of the top iron guys once I get down there. He actually showed up on my list last week for the bronze tournaments. He was playing really well. Kevin Pillar uh, picked up by the Sox after they traded Mookie Betts, unfortunately. Uh, I've always enjoyed watching Kevin Pillar play. I think he's a little bit um, a little bit worse defensively these days, a little bit slower, but he's always been a fun guy to watch out there. Uh, always been a Red Sox killer, too. Guy Bush is a pretty good starting pitcher uh, in the bronze tournaments. Uh, I bet he'd probably perform pretty well in the iron and uh, stone leagues too. Uh, I don't know that you'll see him perform much above like a bronze level in the main out of the park game, but uh, not a bad guy to have on your staff uh, at the lower levels. I'm excited to learn more about the iron cards. Uh, I think there's a lot of them out there, a lot more than the than there are bronze cards, obviously. So I think it's going to be uh, a fun learning experiment experiment for me. There's Ernie Banks. I don't have that Ernie Banks card yet, and uh, he might be a good backup for Joe Tinker. Uh, I don't know. We'll take a look the next time we start a bronze tournament up. I'm going to keep running my team in one bronze tournament a day uh, or a time, and then they'll be in two iron tournaments at a time uh, as opposed to the three bronze tournaments they've been in. Here comes a diamond. Strasburg, we've already got him, so we could throw him on the auction house. There's some packs for us. Uh, Strasburg has been pretty awesome for us.
Chris Davis is a guy who has some top end in those bronze tournaments too. So uh, I'm seeing him in the top 50 uh, a couple times, but he's got a lot of, he's got a really high um, washout rate too, a really high dud percentage from him. But overall, if you're hard pressed for some offense, then he's not a bad guy to throw in there. I suspect, though I don't know yet, that this Kenny Lofton card could be pretty interesting down there in the iron in the iron tournaments. I'm surprised to see a 2015 Adam Adovino this low. Uh, he was a guy for a few years there in Colorado who was the only guy who could get guys out in their bullpen. He was he was lights out. He had some crazy movement uh, on his pitches. There's Johnny Evers. This is a guy who showed up in our second base list this week. Uh, a card I don't have yet. So uh, I've been wanting to upgrade my second base on those in my bronze tournament. So we'll see if uh, we might plug him in there. That's a Brian O'Grady tonight. That's at least two. I think it's safe to say we've seen our perfect card for the night. I doubt we see two of them, right? Mariano Duncan from 1985. That looks like an interesting card. So let's see what his 1985 looked like. Uh, I like to look at some of these older guys every now and then. 1985 was his rookie year, uh, playing for the Dodgers that year. He finished 23rd in the MVP voting and 3rd in the Rookie of the Year voting. Uh, easily his best year, though. Uh, six home runs, 39 RBIs, batted 244, so not... Not a stupendous season, to uh, say the least. 24 doubles, though. It was the second most he had his entire career. Uh, that's not true. He had 34 at one time with the Yankees. Uh, led the league in 1990 in triples, randomly, out of nowhere. Uh, Cincinnati must have been a big triples park that year. Lots of teams. So he played for Philadelphia, the Dodgers, Cincinnati, the Yankees, Toronto, uh, in only 12 years, so interesting journeyman player. Uh, not a kind of a cool looking stuff there. Uh, Shea Hillenbrand was fun for a little while, but man, that dude was nuts. Uh, kind of a crazy dude. Petit is one of the better relievers. Here's another diamond, another Strasburg. The game really wants me to have a lot of Strasburgs. I've had worse problems. Almost halfway through the packs. Uh, pretty good night so far uh, with a perfect live Max Scherzer. We got two Strasburgs that have come down. We've got uh forget who the gold we got was. We did get a gold, so not too bad so far.
I've got Gesselman in relief right now. Uh, I'd like to move on from him, uh, but I don't have anybody better at the moment. Jose Martinez just outside of the top five this week at first base. He actually dropped off. He was top five last week. Uh, getting used a lot, getting used by everybody, and he is up in the leaderboard a lot, but he also stinks a lot too. Here comes another diamond. Rendon, I've also got Rendon already on this team, so uh, yeah, lots of guys we can put on the auction house, so fun stuff. At least we're earning some packs back, right? Ah, some bronzes there, but nothing super interesting. Nothing terribly helpful to me right now. Taylor McKinney is a guy who I thought was going to be pretty good. Uh, never really developed into uh, into the, the the runner, the guy I thought he was going to be. Down to the last 20 packs. Uh, already kind of consider the pack opening a success. Had some good cards come out. But let's see if we can make it a really good night with these last 20. Another diamond, ugh, gross. Nobody wants a roll as Chapman on their team. Probably the only diamond that could have made the night worse. Another gold, Nelson Cruz. Uh, he was a diamond last year, I think. Pete Alonso has been a good card at first base. And all sorts of gold. Kid Elberfield. Kid Elberfeld. 1904. Let's see. Played for the Yankees that year. Uh, as denoted on his card. Batted 263. 117 hits. Uh, second most that he had. Third most that he had any time in his career. Uh, 46 RBIs. 13 doubles that year. 18 stolen bases. Uh, he played 14 seasons. In the late 1890s and 1900s, early 1900s, for six different teams, mostly with the Yankees, seven years with the Yankees. 
finished his career with 10 home runs. Uh, it was a different game back then. 169 doubles, 213 steals, and a 271 batting average. Did lead the league and hit by pitch twice, including 1911 when he got hit 25 times. So not quite the prolific hit batsman such as Huey Jennings was back then, but uh, nonetheless managed to get plunked his share of the time. Ew. Hey, Garanteria from 2005. I'm not sure what he did in 2005 to be an unsung hero besides making errors. Uh, I'm going to look that season up just to see if my memory is not serving me correctly. But in 2005, here comes a gold, George Springer. Uh, after gold gloves and all-star appearances and... Uh, top 15 in the MVP list with St. Louis. He came over to Boston, and if you remember 1997, he was pretty instrumental in the Florida Marlins winning the World Series. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure he had the series winning hit on a ground ball up the middle, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, standard fielding, 2005, 30 errors. Gross. Uh, he was just bad, 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 bad in the field. I don't know why he was a cold glove shortstop at one time and came over to the Red Sox and stunk. Uh, I did not enjoy watching him play. Uh, Heidi Miney was a card that just popped up in 1931. He won 19 games for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, with a 298 earned run average through 284 innings and faced 1,202 batters that year. Those two stats led the league, uh, as did his 19 wins. Uh, there was not a Cy Young Award in 1931, so uh, did not win an award that year. He likely would have uh, if the award had been present back then. With five packs to go. Still just sitting at one perfect. Sitting at two Strasburgs, one Rollers Chapman, uh, one other diamond that we got that I don't remember. And then a bunch of golds. Uh, so pretty good night so far. Still not a lick at any of these bronze cards I want, though. Uh, though we did get that. Um, uh, we did get Ernie Banks, so that's cool. Mark Lemon Jello, much better than Lime Jello. Last two packs. We close it out with Stephen Voigt. Good catcher. Didn't quite make the top five list for my bronzes, but he's a useful card uh, at the catcher position in the bronze tournaments. Uh, let's go see who we can plug in. Uh, Max Scherzer's got to come in, right? Let's see. Higby's in my bullpen. Uh, and I'm okay with him in the bullpen. He's been pitching pitching pretty well. Uh, I think that 
I don't really have anybody that I want to take out right now for Scherzer, to be honest. What's his ratings look like? Good ratings this year on that Scherzer. Uh, much better movement than his ratings from last year. What's he going for on auction? 25. So I guess what we could do is take Chris Sale out. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go, Chris Sale, you get to come to the bench. Max Scherzer is going to take over in there. Or Aldis Chapman is not going in my lineup. Uh, Rendon's already in my lineup. We're going to put him up on the auction house. He's going for 5200 I guess it's almost worth selling him for. See, we got two Strasburgs here. He's going for 5500 uh, We'll see if we can sell them. See, as far as anybody else, uh, we did get another George Springer, but we're not going to worry. Kid Elberfield, let's see what this card looks like. Really good defensive shortstop. Uh, good contact, good home run power, good eye, good runner. Uh, who is my shortstop right now? Dick Groat. Let's go ahead and compare them. Uh, Dick Groat's been playing great for us. And I don't think I want to swap him out for Kid Elberfield right now. The defense, comparable. Elberfield's a little bit better. Uh, but I think we're going to stick with Groat for now. Uh, we'll see if Groat starts not playing well, then maybe we will switch. Um, let's see, who else did we get? We did not. We got uh, Ron Paranowski, a closer today. Here's a bullpen arm that we might be able to throw in there. Let's see, Jansen. Everybody else is pitching really well. I, I don't want to shake it up while things are going well. Third base, we've got Rendon at third. Uh, I don't think I'm going to make any other changes right now. I'm curious how much this Jeter Downs card is going for. 3300 so not too bad there. Uh, so the stuff for Aroldis Chapman is really good, but I don't want him on my team. It makes me feel dirty. So we're going to go ahead and see if somebody wants to buy him. We'll have hopefully more packs to open tomorrow. Otherwise, that's about it. We're going to go ahead and move. Well, my rotation is pretty good. I guess we'll move Bieber into the bullpen for now and Scherzer into the rotation. Scherzer can be our number two. Well, let's make him our number three. And then Bieber can be some middle relief. And then we'll go ahead and call that good for them. I didn't make any changes on offense. I think we're going to... Well, actually, let's dump Mark Canna. I forgot he was still in there. And we will bring up... Uh, can't be Springer. We've already got him. That's somebody I was just looking at. Here we go. Heels Becker. So Zuna's already up here. Becker's going to come up and be our backup and our number one pinch hitter. Probably just our number one pinch hitter. So we will call that the team. So anyhow, uh, that's about where we're at for tonight. Uh, it's been a pretty good stream. So again, we got live Max Scherzer. We got two Strasburgers that we're trying to sell. We got uh, an Aralis Chapman that uh, we're trying to sell. We got a bunch of golds, 58 packs, man. That wasn't, wasn't a bad night for 58 packs. Um, Let's head back to the start screen and see how this team did in their game while we were in there. And my RN team already got knocked out. I expected that because it was just thrown together. Bronze team still playing. Let's 
check in on them in just just a second. Let's see, uh, fifty-eight looks like we got a loss. We did nine to one. Who took the loss? to Grom got lit up. Four runs in the first inning, five in the sixth. Not a great game. Uh, yeah, Varus came in, and it was a lost cause at that time. So uh, let's see, doubles. Bottomley with his 20th double. Just continues to light the world on fire. Jim Bottomley, guys, if you got 15,000 perfect points and you're not a PAX only guy and you're not buying Jim Bottomley, that card is just filthy. It's cheap and it's awesome. Uh, again, designated hitter, that's all he's going to give you, but uh, he's pretty awesome. And we just went down 2-1 to one in the tournament. Let's go ahead and watch game four once it comes through. So, again, looking at this team, so Pierzynski has been uh, pretty good. Brian Roberts continues to be a good leadoff hitter for us. Or actually, we move him down to number eight. We might move him back to leadoff. But Hanser Alberto has been pretty good in these bronze tournaments. Aristides Aquino has been uh, provided some power. Not much else. Uh, decent defensively. Uh, not my favorite right fielder. But he's what we're going with for now. We do have Steve Cook going in game four of this series. So hopefully he can right the ship. He's been a guy who's been awesome for us throughout all of these tournaments. Uh, Doug Burge is getting lit up in this tournament. Uh, two games, five innings, four runs in the first one, three innings, uh, five runs in the other one. So he's going to pitch, looks like, the next couple days. So it'll be, so it looks like the rotation's right in order. It'll be Kawakami in game five and then Bird in game six if we need it. See if we can get this to finish simulating for us. This is a big game being down two to one in the tournament. We need some of these tournaments to go through and have us play well. Uh, let's watch the highlights of game four. And if we get into a game five where we're tied two to two, maybe we'll do some play by play. A full replay, perhaps. Uh, we are on the road for this one with Alberto leading off against Dennis Blair for Missouri. 68 degrees, partly cloudy, beautiful night for baseball. Blair's been good in this tournament for them, so uh, hopefully we can get to him, but we'll see. I do not want to go down three to one. Uh, it is the bottom of the third runner on first. Steve Cook trying to get out of it. Line drive into right field. That's not good. It'll be first and second with one out. Or the next batter is going to be Mike A. Marshall. Not the guy. Oh, wait. No, he got through it. Uh, so we move to the fourth inning. Two to one, Marshall is up with a runner on first. Mike Yastrzemski having a good tournament. Marshall hits it through the shortstop and into left field. Dewey trying to get something going here in the fourth. Uh, that brings up Will Myers with one out. Runners on first and second. And he'll take strike three. And Demeter will be left to try to clean up the mess that Myers left. And he hits it into right field. Will it be enough to score Yastrzemski? Yastrzemski is around third trying to score. And will. It's one to nothing. Dewey takes the lead in the fourth trying to even the series up at two. Still top of the fourth. Ryan Roberts coming up. The number eight hitter. Swings. It's a blast. That one's way back. And into the gap in right center field. At least one run will score. The second run is coming around, and he will score. It's three to nothing, Dewey, here in the fourth inning as Demeter makes it all the way around from first base. Bottom of the fifth now, first and third with two outs for Stephen Voigt. The 1-0 pitch is blooped into shallow center field. Demeter coming on. We'll make the play. We head on to the sixth inning, and it's still three nothing, Dewey. Just three hits so far as Steve Cook has finally put it together in this 
particular tournament. Mike Yastrzemski is up now. He counters 1-2 on him. He swings and puts one in the gap in right center field. He may go for three. Nope, he'll hold up at second. Leadoff double in the set in the eighth inning for Yastrzemski. Brings up Aristides Aquino, the number three hitter. Already three home runs in the tournament. Hits a blast to left center field. That one will find the gap and bounce off the wall. Aquino with another run batted in. He's going to round second and go for third and will make it in time for a run scoring triple. Uh, will Myers will step up now. Still top of the eighth as the decimal is trying to put this one way out of reach. And Myers crushes one to left field. The left fielder is just going to look at it. That's going to make it six to nothing. And Dewey is getting closer to tying the series up. Uh, Cook looking for the complete game shutout now. This is big. Uh, runners on first and third with Jerry Lumpy up. Uh, it's going to be a 1-1 pitch as Cook tries to close out a shutout. You don't get to see many of those these days, so it'd be nice to have him close it out. The pitch, he will not. They left him in just a little bit too long, and suddenly it's 6-3. to three. And they should probably grab the bullpen at this point. Uh, as Cook will remain in the game. The 3-1 pitch to Jesus Aguilar. Swings and hits it. The shortstop picks it up. No play. And suddenly this game's getting a little bit dicey here in the bottom of the ninth inning. One out away. They bring in Jake Diekman, their reliable closer for the Dewey Decimals. He will face Jed Jerko. And it's a soft ground ball to the shortstop. Cost a second, we'll end the game, and Dewey will tie the series up at two. With just under three minutes left till the next simulation. Man, Steve Cook, you had such a good game going. Uh, that's more in line with what I expect from him in these tournaments, to be honest. Uh, we're going to have Kawakami going next. Uh, you can you can do worse than having Kawakami and Doug Bird going with Yarbrough after that. My pitching staff's been decimated in this series, though. But the bullpen's rested. Uh, need to win two of the next three. It's basically a best of three series at this point. Uh, and the offense has been pretty good. Still just, just six home runs. Uh, well, eight home runs. Looks like we got some home runs from our bench. Uh, stealing some bases. Playing not great defense, mediocre defense. Pitching staff has been abysmal. 66 runs against. Uh, but when you let most of them up in games that you're losing 10 to nothing and 12 to 7 and 9 to 2, you can still win games with a really bad Pythagorean record. I bet the Pythag for this team is probably like, uh, let's see, so it's probably really bad. <laughs> Uh, so just looking at this team, so Steve Cook's been a guy that's all over the leaderboard. Uh, he is one of my top five pitchers. I'll be doing the pitchers tomorrow for these bronze tournaments. Uh, I'll be posting this video up on YouTube after it's done. So if you missed, if you're just showing up and you missed the lists for the bronze hitters, then it'll be up on YouTube tonight. Uh, you can check out the link at my Discord or uh, it should be right there in chat for you too. Uh, I post all my out of the park videos on there now. It's a new thing. It's a work in progress. If you have stuff to say, hit me up here or in Discord uh, and let me know what you think. Uh, this is not a full time job, nor do I ever expect to make money off of it. But it's fun, and I'd like to do well. Uh, so, uh, if you have any feedback for me, let me know. Uh, my starters earn run average in this series is 7.03. I don't know how we made it to the second round of this tournament. There, 
that's just bad. Let's see, three to one win in game seven. Let's check game six out. This is the one Cook pitched seven innings, one run, two strikeouts. Uh, Gilnar got the hold, and Stanek got the save in game six, actually. Uh, not our closer. Diekman must have been tired. And then we scored two runs in the eighth. So we were tied at one going into the eighth of game seven. I uh, got a great performance out of Kawakami. Six innings, one run. The bullpen uh, laid it down. Gelner has been awesome. Uh, and Don Ace with the save. So Diekman, the bullpen has been kind of all picking up Jake Diekman, but he's allowed just the one run so far. Three saves, saves from Ace and Ryan Stanek as well. Uh, Gesselman continues to struggle just a little bit. And we'll see how game five goes here in just a second. Uh, this team does have interesting stuff going on with them right now. I've got Marshall playing first base. Uh, Alberto Roberts, Tinker is a great shortstop. Mark Quinn uh, was the guy I wanted to run out there in left field, but I haven't had a chance to uh, change to the new guys, uh, the updated rankings this week. Uh, Aquino at DH. I've got Ray Sanders who doesn't provide me, well, he's one for three with a home run in the tournament so far uh, as our number one pinch hitter. So Will Myers off the bench. Uh, Iglesias playing backup defense for us in the middle. Everybody's tired right now. It'd be nice to win the next two games, maybe get a day off before the next series. See if we can kick this simulation in the face a little bit. There it goes. Sometimes the simulation doesn't come through and tell me it's done. I'm going to go ahead and watch the full replay of this one. It's going to be quick. We're going to go through uh, fast. Dewey's still on the road. Game five. Uh, Hanser Alberto will lead off. It's 2 2 to Alberto. Missouri. Wait, this is still yesterday's game. Hmm. Why is this still yesterday's game? Let's go to the end. Options. Exit. Here we go. Now we've got the download file coming through. Sorry about that. We'll get through this one quick. See if we can cheer Dewey on. So Dewey goes home now. Uh, Will Myers leading off against Kenshin Kawakami. Uh, it'll be a 2-2 pitch to Myers. And he'll strike him out to lead off the game. Good start for Kawakami. Lumpe steps up. Pops it up. Shallow center field. Demeter coming on. We'll make the easy play in center field for out number two in the top of the first. Uh, Ian Happ steps up with two outs. And we'll pop it up to center field as well. Demeter coming on to make another easy catch. One, two, three. Goes Missouri in the top of the first. Leadoff hitter for the Dewey Decimals is Hanser Alberto. Alberto takes the first pitch and hits it into right field for the first hit of the game for Dewey. A leadoff single for Alberto. Bringing up Mike Yastrzemski, who's having himself a pretty good tournament, hitting 366. Hits it softly in front of the third baseman. There will be no play at second. Yastrzemski beats it out. An infield hit for Yastrzemski, and Dewey is in business here in the first inning with Aristides Aquino, their big power hitter, coming up. He'll run the count full and then swing and pop out to the shortstop. Maybe the center fielder? No, it's the shortstop. Disappointing at bat for Aquino. 
Uh, but that'll bring up Pierzynski. And a 2-1 pitch to Pierzynski. Be a hit on the ground to the second baseman. Double play ball. There's one at second. They won't be able to turn it. Two outs now in the first. Dewey trying not to squander. Will Myers, one and two, swings and misses at strike three, and a squander it is for the Dewey Decimals as we move on to the top of the second. Kevin Crone steps up and hits one to center field. Demeter getting a lot of work out there so far early in this game. That'll be out number one of the second inning. Tommy Heinrich coming up. The 1 0 pitch is hit into left field for a one out single. Next batter is Ethan Allen. The first pitch to him. He hit on the ground to third. Roberts to second. On to first. Double play. And that's the easiest way to get out of an inning when you let up a hit. Mark Quinn will lead off for Dewey in the bottom of the second. That's 2 0, oh, and Quinn bloops it in the center field, but it'll be an easy play for Ian Happ. Ian Happ is a guy who can play anywhere you want. Uh, Dom Demeter comes up. Swings and hits it soft on the ground of the third baseman. The throw on to first will be out number two. As Ryan Roberts comes up. Batting eight for Dewey right now. Swings and hits it. Easy play for the first baseman. That'll end the inning. We move on to the third. Evan Longoria leading off. And that'll be a leadoff single for Missouri. Bringing up Charlie Babb. The 2-0 pitch for the number eight hitter has popped up. Shallow left field. The shortstop going back. Makes the play. Joe Tinker with the catch. Roddy Reed steps up. Number five on our best catchers for bronze league list. And the 2-1 pitch to Reed, batting ninth, is laced into center field. And Demeter can't get there. It bounces once and goes off the wall. The throw comes in to Tinker, the cutoff man at short, and it'll be second and third with one out with the top of the order coming up for Missouri. Will Myers looking to do some damage. Ropes one into left field, and that's going to score two runs, maybe more. It's gone. A home run for Will Myers, his second of the tournament. Missouri goes up three to nothing in the top of the third. That one's hitting to the right field corner. Kawakami getting hit all over the ballpark here in the third inning. Needs to find a way to get through it and let his offense try to get him back into it. Ian Happ comes up, runner on second, one out. Happ hits it on the ground to first. The play will be made by Myers, and he'll tag first and get out number two. That brings up Kevin Crone. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bounced in front of the plate. The throw to first. They can't get him. A run will score on the pass ball with the strikeout. Wait, no, it was, a, was that a bunt? Run scoring single, it's four to nothing as the catcher can't make the play, Pierzynski. And that one's blooped and a base hit in the right field as this inning just will not end for the decimals. Kawakami still in the game. Hit on the ground. Tinker coming on. Tinker picks it up, throws to first. We'll end the inning, but not before Missouri scores four runs. And Dewey has some work to do now to get back into this one. But they'll have Joe Tinker then the top of the order to try to get it done. The 1-2 pitch to Tinker. Swung on and missed for strike three. And Hunter Alberto will come up with a 2-1 pitch. Singled in his first at bat. Flies out to right field this time. For out number two. Kostremski also singled in his first at bat. Has another single here. Two for two on the game for Yastrzemski, pushing 400 with his batting average in the tournament. Aquino looking to make up for popping out. With runners on first and second and nobody out in the first inning, trying to do some damage here in the third. Swings and crushes one to left field. The left fielder's going back, and just like that, the Dewey Decimals are right back in it. It's 4-2 to two on a two-run home run for Aristides Aquino. 
Kurzinski comes up 0 and 2. Going on, blooped into right field. The right fielder's coming on and will make the catch for out number two. Or for out number three, excuse me. We head to the fourth inning. Long third inning. It's 4 to 2 going into the fourth. Evan Longoria leading off again. And he'll have his second hit of the game. Lead off single in the fourth, just like he did in the third. Kawakami remains in the game to face Charlie Babb. That one's hit in the air to the left field. Mark Quinn makes the play and throws it back in. The runner holds up at first. Kawakami trying to get Roddy Reed to get out of this inning. Maybe a double play. It will not. Reed will hit one into the gap. Uh, another big hit for Roddy Reed. The meter throws it in to Tinker. Tinker will cut it off, and it'll be runners on second and third again. With just one out here in the fourth inning as Kawakami continues to run into trouble. Looking to get Will Myers, the 0-2 pitch. Struck him out. Big strikeout for Kawakami. As Jerry Lumpe will come up. One and two. Runners on second and third. The biggest at bat of the game so far. He hits a fly ball to center field. Demeter is there to get out of the inning. No damage. Two hits. And it remains four to two as Dewey continues to try to scratch back into this one with Will Myers leading off. He bloops it into center field. Lead off single for Will Myers. Mark Quinn comes up now with a runner on first. The first pitch, Myers is taken off for second. The throw will not be in time. Myers has a stolen base into scoring position as Dewey tries to get back into it. Keep Clark pulling away. The swing is hit back to the pitcher. That'll be out number one, but moves Myers up to third. Fly ball now will score him as Dom Demeter comes up. One and one on the ground between the pitcher and the second baseman, and that'll be out number two. As Ryan Roberts steps up, runs the count full, takes ball four. It'll be runners on first and third with two out here in the bottom of the fourth. Joe Tinker, Roberts takes off for second. The throw will not be in time. The tying run is on second base now for Joe. Joe Tinker remains at bat. The 3-1 pitch taken for ball four. The bases are loaded for the top of the order. As Hans or Alberta will come up. Already with one hit, one for two on the game. The first pitch to him, he swings and hits it softly to the second baseman. And that'll be out number three as they leave the bases loaded. It remains four to two. Kawakami continues to pitch here into the top of the fifth. And he'll get out number one. As Kevin Crone comes up with one out, the 1 0 pitch. Kevin Crone with another hit back up the middle. A one out single. Tommy Henrik comes up. The throw to first does not get Crone. The 1 1 pitch to Henrik. Crushed into the gap in right center field, and it's got to be the ball game for Kawakami at this point. That one's going to score a run. Crone coming around third. It's a triple for Tommy Henrik. And it's 5-2. to two. As The chances for the decimals are looking mighty dismal right now. Craig Stammen comes into the game, and they're going to have to get into that bullpen early. That is not good for the decimals. Hit on the ground is short. They'll hold the runner at third. Stammen trying to get out of it without letting up any more damage as Evan Longoria comes up. The first pitch to Longoria is crushed on the ground, but Rodgers is there. Throw to first. And they get out of it with just the one run. It'll be Yastrzemski, Aquino, and Pierzynski here in the bottom of the fifth. Dewey once again three down by three. Out number one. Aquino, who hit a home run earlier in the game. This is a one-two pitch. Nobody on. He'll take strike three for out number two. Pierzynski grounds out to second. Nothing going in the fifth. And Charlie Babb grounds out to first. Myers takes it himself. Craig Stammen still in the game. Roddy Reed with the 3-0 pitch. Takes ball four. 
top of the order comes up. Uh, Alex Claudio comes into the game for the decimals to face Will Myers. And that one's hit into left field for a one-out single, and it'll be runners on first and second with one out. Claudio attempts to not make the damage worse. That one's popped up, shallow right field. Alberto going back. Yastrzemski coming on. Alberto will call him off and make the catch. The 1-0 pitch to Hap. Hit on the ground to third. Roberts is there. Picks it up. Throws to second. Uh, a little bit wide, but Alberto makes the play for out number three. And we head to the bottom of the sixth. It's still 5-2. Will Myers leading off for the decimals. Hits it softly on the ground. A short pitcher there. Out number one. Mark Quinn, the second batter of the inning. Another ground ball to short. That'll be out number two. And the 1 2 pitch to Dom Demeter. Laced into right field and lands in front of the right fielder. Demeter has his first hit of the game. As they try to get something going, number 8 hitter Ryan Roberts comes up next. And he. Throw from the catcher to the first baseman is down the right field line. Demeter moves to second. Roberts looking for a chance to drive a run in. And softly to the shortstop. The throw to first will end the inning. We head to the seventh, and it's still 5-2. to two. Nothing doing for Dewey since the third. Ryan Stanick comes into the game as the decimals manager seems intent to burn all of his bullpen arms. And that one's hitting the center field for a leadoff single from Kevin Crone. Henrik comes up. Henrik's having a big game. Already a run-scoring double. And he puts this one down the left field line. Going to be another double for Tommy Henrik. Crone's going to try to score and will. And Dewey can probably kiss this game goodbye at this point as that one's hitting the right field. And that's going to make it 7-2. to two. I think that's enough of this one. I've seen, oh, no, 6-2. The 3-0 pitch taken for ball four. Bases are loaded with nobody out. And this one could get out of hand very quickly. Charlie Babb with the infield in. Hits a fly ball to center field. The runner at third is tagging. It's going to be deep enough to score him and make it 7-2. to The throw comes all the way to the plate, but will not be nearly in time. The decimals look like they're in trouble. Roddy Reed already with a lot of hits this game. Strikes out. But Will Myers does not. That one's going to make it 9-2, to 8-2. The meter can't get to it, and we're going to call that all she wrote for this game and go see how game six went. 10-2 the final. Not the most exciting game. We got a new file. Let's go ahead and check the highlights of game six out and see if Dewey can stave off elimination for one more game. We do have the right pitcher going today. Hopefully. Uh, with uh, It's not Steve Cook. It is whoever our other number one pitcher is. But Demeter is going to lead off today against Frank Viola. Demeter swings and crushes one to left to lead off the game, and that'll make it quickly one to nothing Dewey. Home run for Dom Demeter to start off game six. Uh, Doug Bird pitching for the decimals. 1-0 pitch is hitting the center field and not a good first inning for Bird. The runner's going to score from first, and it's 1-1. One one. Doug Bird is not having a good series for the decimals right now. The top of the second, 1-1 one, one pitch is hit on the ground in second. The throw to first will end the threat. Uh, and Dewey can't get anything in the second. Bottom of the fourth, runner on first. 1-1 one, one pitch to Tommy Henrik, who is crushing the decimals in this series. Hits it down the right field line and continues to have the number of the decimals pitching staff. That's three doubles in the last two games for Tommy Henrik. As Bird tries to get Stephen Voigt. And he does. That's a strikeout. That'll be the second out of the fourth inning. 
And now trying to get out of it with Ari Adrianza stepping up to the plate. The 1-0 pitch to Adrianza is a fly ball to center field. Demeter coming in. Will he get there in time? Yes. Battle in the fourth inning, and it remains 1-1. One to one. Bottom of the fifth now, 3-1 three and one, three one pitch on Kevin Crone with Ian Happ on first. Happ takes off for second. No, I lied. It's ball four. Now with the runners on first and second, Yastrzemski comes up, hits a fly ball to left field. That's not going to get it done. It may get the runner to third. The runner tags and the throw comes in. No play at third. First and third with two outs now here in the bottom of the fifth as Bird tries to work his way around a walk and a single. The 2-0 pitch is blooped in the left field. Caught by Mark Quinn. And through five, it remains one to one. Top of the sixth now. Aristides Aquino. The 0-1 pitch is crushed opposite field way back. Aquino makes it two to one decimals. That's his fifth home run of the postseason. Uh, Henrik comes up in the bottom of the sixth. I don't want to watch this guy hit anymore, guys. I'm not going to lie. There's another one into the gap. It's Tommy Henrik with another extra base hit. He's going to pull up at second base with a leadoff double here in the bottom of the sixth. Every time the decimals do something positive, Tommy Henrik comes up in the next inning and ruins everything as Longoria steps up, trying to drive him in. The pitch is hit on the ground. Tinker is up with it, throws to first for out number one, but Henrik moves to third, and the tying run is 90 feet away from home plate. Stephen Voigt will come up. The 3-0 pitch will be ball four, first and third with one out. Doug Bird trying to get Adrianza to hit into the double play. The 0-2 pitch will be swung on and missed for strike three as Bird tries to work around a leadoff double by Tommy Henrik. He'll pitch to Jerry Lumpe trying to finish it. The 0-2 pitch to Lumpe is popped up. Shallow center field. Demeter coming on. Makes the catch. Doug Bird works around trouble and it's on to the seventh inning. Still 2-1 to one Dewey. Runner on third, Joe Tinker, two outs with Dom Demeter up at the plate. Remember, he had a leadoff home run in the first. He'll swing and hit one into right field and make it 3-1. to one. Here in the top of the seventh for the decimals. They try to scratch their way into a game seven. Bottom of the seventh, one out. Is Mero Petit into the game against Kevin Crone. And Crone hits one into right field, a one-out single. That brings up Mike Yastrzemski, the 1-0 pitch to Yastrzemski. Fly ball, center field. The meter is there for out number two. Bottom of the ninth, 0-1 pitch to Adrianza. Jake Diekman into the game. Adrianza hits a fly ball to center field. Demeter coming over. Yastrzemski coming over. Demeter calls for it. Makes the play for out number one. And the 2-1 pitch to Ian Happ with two outs. Ground ball to third. Up with it. Roberts to throw to first. And the decimals somehow force a game seven after getting blown out in game five. Currently simulating which is really scary. I do not speak Spanish, but welcome to the stream. And hello. I got that much at least. Is this game seven? This is game seven. Hanser Alberto. Oh, Missouri's still leading three to two. Exit. Where is my game seven? There we go.
All right, game seven between the Decimals and the Missouri Kitty Corns. It'll be the top of the first. Ryan Yarborough struggling in this tournament very badly, trying to lock it down for the Decimals to get onto the third round. Missouri looking to get on the third round with Will Myers leading off the 3 1 pitch from Yarborough. Eight thirty-eight earned run average for Yarbrough so far, and he'll start the game off with a walk to Will Myers. Not the way you want your pitcher to start Game Seven. Ian Happ will bat next. The two-one pitch is a ground ball to third. Roberts up with it. Throw to second. Alberto turns it. Throws to first for the double play. That'll be two outs here in the first inning. Ethan Allen batting third for Missouri. It's a ground ball to second. Alberto comes up with it, throws to first for out number three. The top of the first is over. The Dewey Decimals will have Hunter Alberto leading off. Three two pitches blooped in the center field. Easy play for the center fielder. Out number one, Alberto is retired. That brings up Mike Yastrzemski. And the 0-2 pitch to Yastrzemski is hit in the air to center field. Diving catch by Ian Happ. And Aquino comes up facing a 2-0 pitch. Hits it in the air to left. Should be an easy play for out number three. No hits for either team in the first inning. We head to the second. Nothing, nothing. Yarborough trying to get his control back. Ground ball picked up by the first baseman, and Myers will tag the bag for out number one. 2 1 pitch to Lumpe. Hit on the ground. He's up with it. Throw to first. Out number two. Longoria steps up. The 2-1 pitch to Evan Longoria has popped up. Krasinski over. Roberts over. Roberts calls for it. Makes the catch for out number three. We move on to the bottom of the second. It'll be Marshall, Demeter, and Quinn for the decimals. Marshall hits it in front of the left fielder. It's a leadoff single for Mike A. Marshall continues to hit for the decimals. And Dom Demeter will step up next. The 1-1 one, one pitch to him. Popped up behind first. That will be out number one. As Mark Quinn steps up. That one's hit to short. Can they turn the double play? That'll be one on to first. Double play. Decimals get the first hit of the game, but don't do anything with it. As we go on to the top of the third inning, and it's still nothing, nothing. Yarborough will face Mike Yastrzemski to start it off. The 0-1 pitch is hit in the left field above the head of the shortstop for a leadoff single from Yastrzemski. First hit of the game for Missouri. And the 1-0 pitch to Roddy Reed. 2-1 pitch to Roddy Reed after the throw to first. Reed hits it on the ground. Roberts is up with it. Throw to second for one. The throw on to first. Double play. That's the second double play the decimals have turned in this game. And that will bring up Adrianza with two outs. The 2-2 pitch is a fly ball to center field. Demeter coming over. Will he be able to get to it? He's under it and makes the play for out number three. No score through the top of the third. It'll be Roberts, Guerin, and Tinker. Guerin starting the game today instead of Pierzynski for the decimals. Roberts hits the fly ball into center field, which should be an easy play for the center fielder for out number one. As Bob Guerin will come up. And the first pitch, or the yeah, the first pitch to him is blooped into right field. Easy play for Yastrzemski, and that's out number two. And Joe Tinker will try to get something going here. The 0-2 pitch to him is laced into center field, but it hangs up long enough for Ian Happ to make the play. Yarbrough in the fourth. 1-0 pitch to Will Myers is hit up the middle. That's going to be a leadoff single for Will Myers. 
We'll see if Yarbrough can work around his second leadoff hit in a row as Ian Happ comes up, grounded into double play his first at bat. The 1 0 pitch is blooped into left field. That one's going to fall in front of the left fielder, and suddenly Yarbrough is in trouble here in the fourth. First and second with nobody out, with Ethan Allen coming up. Ethan Allen, the first pitch is crushed into the gap, and that's going to be the first runs of the game for Missouri. At least one run will score. Ian Happ is rounding third base, but will hold up there. It'll be runners on second and third with nobody out and one run in. Kevin Crone comes up, the 0-1 pitch to him. That's going to drive in at least one more run. The runner will round third, the throw to the plate. Crone's going to take second on the bad throw, and it's 3 to nothing. and another run is in scoring position as Ryan Yarbrough has the wheels falling off here in the fourth inning. That one's hit on the ground back to Yarbrough. He'll throw to first, and it'll be out number one with Evan Longoria coming up. The 0-1 pitch to Longoria with the infield in. Picked up by the Anzer Alberto. He'll throw to first and hold the runner on third. Uh, Yarbrough trying to limit the damage to three with Mike Yastrzemski up. And he will strike him out for out number three. But three runs across for Missouri here in the fourth inning. And we head on to the bottom of the fourth. And it's working time for the decimals. Hanser Alberto, the leadoff hitter, will start the inning and will hit it on the ground softly back to the pitcher for out number one. As Yastrzemski will bat second. Stremski hits it on the ground. Easy play for the first baseman. Still just one hit for the decimal so far in this one. As Kenshin Kawakami is shutting them down. Okino will face a 1-2 pitch. And will bloop it into left field for a two-out single. Trying to get something, anything started for them right now. Mike A. Marshall would like to get the decimals back into this game with one swing of the bat. The 0-1 pitch. He swings and hits it on the ground softly to the shortstop. Easy play to second. That'll be out number three. And through four innings, the decimals time in this tournament is looking shorter and shorter by the inning. Reed puts one into the gap on the 3-0 pitch. And the route could be on if Yarbrough can't find a way to pitch around this leadoff double. Adrianza steps up. The first pitch to him is line to center field. Demeter is there, dives and makes the catch for out number one. A huge diving play by Dom Demeter as Will Myers comes up. The top of the order, the one two pitch, is popped up to left field. There's Mark Quinn. He's under it for out number two. And the runner is still on second. Ian Happ will step up. The 3 0 pitch to him. Is a fly ball to left field, and somehow Ryan Yarbrough pitches around a leadoff double to Roddy Reed, and we head to the bottom of the fifth, and it's still three to nothing, still within reach for the Dewey Decimals here in Game Seven. Dom Demeter will lead off the bottom of the fifth and hit an easy ground ball to second for out number one. The 0-1 pitch to Mark Quinn. Is hit on the ground to third. Another easy play as they just can't get the ball into the outfield right now. Ryan Roberts, the 1 2 pitch. Shallow right field. Will it fall in? No. 12 more outs for the Dewey Decimals here, unless they can come back somehow in this tournament. It'll be a 3 1 pitch to Ethan Allen. He'll take ball four. Yarbrough is still in the game. Runner on first. Nobody out for Kevin Crone. The first pitch to Crone is hit into right field as Crone is crushing them today, too. The throw to third. Safe. First and third with nobody out in the sixth. And how will Yarbrough get around this one? The infield's got to come in, right? The infield playing double play depth. The 1 1 pitch gets by the catcher. It's a wild pitch. And it's four to nothing in favor of Missouri. Mupe swings and hits it on the ground to first. That'll be out number one, but Crone will move up to third. Longoria steps up. The 3-2 pitch to Longoria with the infield in. 
hit to right field and lands in front of Mike Yastrzemski, and it's five to nothing in favor of Missouri. That will be the end of Ryan Yarbrough as Don Ace comes into the game. Pitched Ace has popped up to left field. Mark Quinn going back just in front of the warning track. Makes the play for out number one. Roddy Reed comes up. The runner goes, and there will be no play at second base. It's a stolen base for Longoria. A 3-1 pitch from Ace to Roddy Reed is hit on the ground a short. The throw to first is out number three, but damage is done. This one may be out of reach for Dewey. It'll be 8-9-1 with Garen Tinker and then Hanser Alberto coming up for the Dewey Decimals this inning. Garen grounds out to the second baseman for out number one, and the number of outs will soon be in the single digits. Joe Tinker swings and misses at strike three. And the 3-1 pitch to Alberto as the Decimals have to make something happen soon. Alberto hits it on the ground to third. That's going to do it here in the sixth. We move to the seventh inning. Missouri nine outs away from moving on to the quarterfinals of this bronze 32 tournament. Ace gets the strikeout of Adrianza. Will Myers comes up the 2-2 pitch from Ace. There's a fly ball to left field. Mark Quinn camps underneath it, makes a play for out number two. 3-1 pitch with two outs to Ian Happ is hitting the gap to right field. Ian Happ looking to pour it on. He might have a triple here. The throw comes in. Happ round second. Holds up there. It's a two-out double for Ian Happ. And the 2-0 pitch to Ethan Allen. Hit on the ground to the shortstop. Joe Tinker is up with it. The throw on to first for out number three. Uh, limiting the damage. But it's still 5 to nothing, and there's only 9 outs left for Dewey to get back into it. Mike Yastrzemski will lead off here in the bottom of the 7th. And he will fly out to shallow right field. Just 2 hits for Dewey so far in this game against Kenshin Kawakami. 1 for the ages for him. Hino steps up. The 2-2 two -two pitch to him. That'll be a hit. Maybe more. It's gone. Aquino with his sixth home run of the tournament. The decimals make it 5-1, to one, but it may be too little too late. Mike A. Marshall steps up. The 1-0 pitch is hitting the center field. Coming over the center field and makes the play for out number two. Dom Demeter steps up. 2-2. Two two. Pitch is swung and hit into left field. They try to keep it rolling, but with two outs. They need to string some hits together here as Mark Quinn steps up to the plate. The throw to first. No play there. Mark Quinn runs the count full against Kawakami. And the pitch is hit into left field. It'll land in front of the left fielder. The throw comes in. It'll be runners on first and third. The decimals trying to chip away a little here in the seventh inning. Ryan Roberts looking to do some damage. The throw to first. Quinn is back standing up. Roberts will run the count full as well. Lots of pitches for Kawakami here in the seventh. Roberts hits it back up the middle into center field. That'll fall in, and it's 5-2. to two. The Decimals trying to scratch back into it. Bob Guerin will step up next. The first pitch to him. Runner takes off. <coughs> Roberts is into second base with a stolen base. Two outs. Guerin with the 0-2 pitch on him. It's a blooper in the right field. The right fielder coming in will make the play. Two runs as the decimals try to pull within three. And it'll be up to John Gilnar into the game now for the decimals trying to keep it within reach. The 3-2 pitch swung on and missed for strike three. He gets Kevin Crone to strike out. The 2-0 pitch to Lumpe is roped into left field. Marshall will not get there. That's going to take one hop and hit the wall. It'll be a one-out double. The 
1-0 pitch to Longoria. Gelnar does not want to give up runs here right after his team just got back into it, and he gets him to line out to the center fielder, Dom Demeter. That's going to bring up Yastrzemski. Mike Yastrzemski with two outs and a runner on second. Hits it in the left field. Mark Quinn coming over. Will he get there? Yes, out number three. He remains 5-2 to two into the bottom of the eighth inning. It'll be Joe Tinker and then the top of the order. This is their time to do some damage. Tinker bunts in front of the catcher. Easy play. The throw to first is out number one. And that will bring up Hanser Alberto. The first pitch to him is hit into center field. Easy play. We call that a can of corn for out number two. Mike Yastrzemski will step up the 2-2 pitch to him. Going on a missed for strike three, and the decimals are down to their last three outs. Gelnar with pitching another inning. Gets the first out on a ground ball to short. That brings up Adrianza, the number nine hitter, the 0-2 pitch to him. John Gelnar, the only pitcher to be effective for the decimals in this game so far. Looks to close out the top of the ninth inning and give his team some shot as he strikes out Evan Longoria to end the inning. 5-2, to two, into the bottom of the ninth. They'll have the four, five, six hitters coming up. Aristides Aquino, Mike A. Marshall, and Dom Demeter. Guys that can do some damage for the decimals if they can string some hits together. It'll be Phil Coke for the Missouri Corn. The first pitch to Aquino. He swings and bloops one into right field. Easy play for out number one. Down to their last two outs, the decimals. The 3 1 pitch to Marshall. Swings and hits it in the left field. That's going to be a one out single. Dom Demeter steps up. The pitch, the first pitch to him is hitting the right field. Yastrzemski coming over will make the easy play down the right field line. And the decimals down to their last out in game seven with Mark Quinn coming to the bit, coming to the plate. The first pitch to Quinn is an easy ground ball to second base. The throw on to first. And the Missouri wins round two, advances to the quarterfinals. The decimals knocked out once again. And that will be the end of the series and the tournaments for the Dewey Decimals. All right, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. It's 10.15 now, and I got to go get some relaxing in before bed. So I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with the pitchers for the bronze tournaments, and then uh, I'll be off this weekend for the Final Fantasy VII release and to spend some time with my family. So we'll see you guys uh, hopefully tomorrow. If not, then we'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out, and have a great night.